Well, welcome everyone back to the round table. Hallelujah. We thank the Lord for his grace and his mercy that has brought us through this week. And uh, he is so gracious. And in spite of all the things that we're seeing happen all around, we thank the Lord that we can, even in these times, be looking up uh, and realizing that our redemption draws near. Let's just open in prayer. Father, we want to thank and praise you so much, Lord, for one more opportunity that we can sit together in unity and be in the place of your commanded blessing. We thank and praise you right now, Lord, for every hearer, Lord, and we want to hear what the Spirit is saying. Thank you, because the entrance of your word brings light, and even as we come together, Lord, we just want to commend ourselves, Lord God, and commit ourselves to your word and to your grace that's able to build us up and to preserve us and keep us. So, Father, even now, we thank you. We pray right now that you'll take our lips and our tongues and let them be yours, Lord, and we will hear what you'll have to say to us through your word. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Brother Shamal. Brother Dennis, what's up? <laughs> Welcome aboard, Captain. <laughs> uh, welcome, everybody, to the um, roundtable uh, Bible study. Um, by the grace of God, we're here together. Praise his name. Uh, today, we're going to continue where we left off last week. Uh, we entered the final chapters of the book of Exodus last week, if you remember the construction of the tabernacle of Moses, or we call it the tabernacle in the wilderness. Am I hearing it an echo or am I okay? We're good. Okay. I'm clear. We can hear you okay. Oh, good. So the renewal of the covenant between God and Israel has taken place. Moses was up on the mountain for 40 days. He came down after the second set of uh, tablets, the stone tablets, so, uh, uh, that that um, um, began a new chapter in Israel's history because it begins the con the construction of the tabernacle and it's going to begin to proceed forward. And if you remember last week, we had uh, uh, in chapters what was it? Chapters uh, thirty six. 30 35 and 36. 36. Right. We were, we were, we were, we were studying uh, the call uh, uh, for giving offerings, contributions, abundant donations for the materials that we needed to build the tabernacle with, or that the children of Israel needed to build the tabernacle with. And today we're going to begin in chapter 37. Before I begin in chapter 37 and we begin discussing that, I want to read something from chapter 84 of the book of Psalms. Psalm 84. I, this caught my attention this morning. And it's the blessedness of dwelling in the house of the Lord or in the house of God. It says, how lovely is your tabernacle, O Lord of hosts. My soul longs, yes, even faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home and the swallow a nest for herself. But where she may lay her young and even your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God, Blessed, listen to this, blessed are those who dwell in your house. They will be praising you forever, Selah. And then down to verse 10, for a day in your courts is better than a thousand. And I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of wickedness. And somehow, of course, this is King David speaking later in the long journey of the children of Israel. Uh, but he is mentioning the house of the Lord and how passionate David was for the house of the Lord. So I want you to get passionate about what we're going to read today in uh, these two chapters, beginning in chapter 37 of 
Exodus. If you've got your Bibles, everybody, turn to chapter 37. And where shall we begin? In verse 1. Why don't you read verses 1 through 5? Uh, Dennis, can you join us and start this, this roundtable? Chapter 37, verses 1 through 5. Yes. Then Bez Betzalel. That's, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. Betzalel. Betzalel. Betzalel, yes. Yes. Made the ark of acacia wood two and a half cubits was its length. A cubit and a half with its width and a cubit and a half of its height. He overlaid it with pure gold inside and outside and made a molding of gold all around it. And he cast for it four rings of gold to be set in its four corners, two rings on one side and two rings on the other side for, of it. He made poles of acacia wood and overlaid them with gold. And he put the poles into the rings at the sides of the ark to bear the ark. All right, so this is the beginning of the building of the tabernacle and the furniture, the holy furniture that's going to be built uh, and, and, and created. Uh, and the first question I want to ask anybody is, who is this Betzalel? It says, then Betzalel made the ark. The first uh, 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 piece of furniture we're going to discuss is the Ark of the Covenant. Who is this Betzalel who made or designed the Ark of the Covenant? Pamela, why don't you be the first to join in? Uh, I forgot the word in English, but he is the principal overseer and manager and designer, the, the head designer. Um, of the tabernacle. Yes. Now, what is that word in English? Artisan. No. Um, you know, when you're running a whole project. The Kablan. Yeah, the Kablan, but I forgot what it is in English. Um, it's, it's like the manager of a building site. He's the overseer. Const no. The constructor, the, 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 the surveyor, the surveyor no. constructor, architect. No, no. no, not architect. He's the one who's managing all the workers on the site. Yeah, we 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 Rossman. we would normally call it like a site manager, but that's not that's not the overall person. Right. Uh, the, o a... the overall person, I know what you're thinking. In about. in biblical Hebrew, Pamela, he would be the chief overseer. Or the he's chief. Not, he's not the overseer. The other one. Uh, oh, yeah. what, what's his name? The other man. Aholiav. Aholiav is the overseer. Betzalel mm -hmm. is the one who designs these. He's the furniture. chief designer and architect. There you okay, are. That's good enough. <laughs> okay. Give us a little bit more information about who he was. Yes. Hmm. What does the name Betzalel mean? Believe it or not, you know the word. Uh, Betzalel. You know, it, it's, it's like the shadow of God. In the shadow. Ah. Of, of God. Cell, it, cell is shadow. And it's L is God. So, so cell L made Salel. Meaning that he had such an anointing. In the shadow of God. That's what it means. In the shadow of God. And he had beautiful. Such, he had such an anointing of mm. artistic anointing and prophetic anointing. And 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 um uh, he was the one who Moses appointed when he went up on the mountain and he got the, the blueprint, so to speak, the vision uh, from God of what to build, he's the one who chose Betzalel to be the chief um, architect. And then the people approved of him and he goes with it. So I want you to realize that this, all the beautiful furniture that is going to be built now is given credit to God Almighty, who's given it to Moses, who's given it to Betzalel. Okay? Very, very beautiful uh, the way this unfolds. Uh, by the way, in modern uh, terms, uh, Israel's principal and first, very first art and design school 
is called after him, Bezalel, uh, uh, Design and Arts Academy. Right, it's wow. the greatest wow. academy in Jerusalem. Yeah. Mm. So he was he was he was ordained to make the Ark of the Covenant. And uh, Rosemary, read verses six through nine, so that we can uh, get the full uh, um, basis, scriptural basis for the Ark of the Covenant. He also made the mercy seat of pure gold. Two and a half cubits was its length and a cubit and a half its width. He made two cherubim of beaten gold. He made them of one piece at the two ends of the mercy seat. One cherub at one end on this side and the other cherub at the other end of that side. He made the cherubim at the two ends of, of one piece with the mercy seat. The cherubim spread out their wings above and covered the mercy seat with their wings. They faced one another. The face of the cherubim were toward the mercy seat. And now, Pamela, I'm going to ask you to read a third portion. We're going to go back, as we did last week, to chapter this, not chapter 26, but chapter 25 of um, Exodus. And I'd like you to read to us chapter 25, verses 10 through 16, make it. Okay. And they <clears throat> shall make an ark of acacia wood, two and a half cubits shall be its length, a cubit and a half its width, and a cubit and a half its height. And you shall overlay it with pure gold, inside and out you shall overlay it and shall make on it a molding of gold all around. You shall cast four rings of gold for it and put them in its four corners, Two Wait. rings shall be on one side and two rings on the other side. And you shall make poles of acacia wood and overlay them with gold. You shall put the poles into the rings on the sides of the ark, that the ark may be carried by them. The poles shall be in the rings of the ark. They shall not be taken from it. And you shall put into the ark the testimony which I will give you. Okay, so once again, we're, we're going back from chapter 35 to 25, and now we're going from, from chapter 35 and 36. We went backwards and saw the commentary, when not the commentary, but how it was originally set, spoken to Moses. And now we're in chapter 37, and we're going back again to chapter 25 and getting the same, uh, what should I call it? It's not a commentary. It's the... It's the, the revelation of what we're talking about here. Talk to us about the Ark of the Covenant, Pamela. The Ark, first of all, is the holiest and most important piece of furniture in the tabernacle and later in the house of the Lord in the um, temple. And it represents, of course, the place where God is seated, uh, where his presence dwells. And there is a special part of the ark, which is the golden plate of a certain thickness. It's solid gold and it rests. It's a kind of the, the roof of the ark. And that's called the kapo ra, the mercy seat. And uh, that is the place um, on the day of atonement when the high priest comes with the blood of the goats and sprinkles the blood on the mercy seat for the atonement of the sins of all of Israel. And that's exactly where I want you to uh, just pause for a second. Okay. Rosemary, I want you to go back to chapter 25 of Exodus and read to us verses 17 through 22. You shall make a mercy seat of pure gold. Two and a half cubits shall be its length and a cubit and a half its width. And you shall make two cherubim of gold, of hammered work you shall make them at the two ends of the mercy seat. Make one cherubim at one end and the other cherubim at the other end. You shall make the cherubim at the two ends of it of one piece with the mercy seat. 
and the cherubim shall stretch out their wings above, covering the mercy seat with their wings, and they shall face one another. Uh, the two faces of the cherubim shall be toward the mercy seat. Clint, are you still with us? Clint, can you pull up the uh, Ark of the Covenant? I think we had it in the past, didn't we? To give everybody a uh, picture of what we're talking about. I, I, think, think, he's I think he's at work. He's at work. Oh, I'm sorry. So. Can I, so. Sorry, I was on mute there. I, I, I can I can grab that, but you just give me a few <laughs> seconds to yes. find. Yeah. Thanks. So let's let's discuss this. Let's discuss the Ark of the Covenant and the Mercy Seat. Um, expand on it. I'm sorry, Pamela. We talked about the Ark of the Covenant. What about the Mercy Seat, Rosemary? What do we have to to say about that? It's the Ark of the Covenant, and Betzalel. He he was commissioned and created this beautiful, exquisite. A uh, holy piece of merchandise. Not uh, merchandise. Person, person merchandise. <laughs> a, 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 object. A, object. Object of worship. <laughs> a a a a um, holy piece of furniture. I meant not a piece of merchandise. Mm -hmm. A holy piece of God's holy of holies. We're talking about something so awesome. There it is. Yeah. The holiest object of Israel of Israeli worship. Now, about this picture, the the roof, the roof of the ark is arched. And I think that the roof was flat because yes, of the need to sprinkle the blood um, on the mercy seat. And it doesn't. It doesn't really show either that there was a kind of rim that goes around the top of it. What the the way this arc is being depicted is the the cherubim, the cherubim are on the top of a like a lid that goes on a box. But um, I think that it's a flat roof and it has a rim all the way around it, like a parapet. Okay, but of course the main point is those cherubim. Yes. It's not just the Ark of the Covenant. It's the mercy seat that I want to discuss here. Because the two, it, the two cherubim are it. like, you know, grace and mercy, so to speak. You know, they're, they're, they're overseeing the holiest of the holies. I think it's so, so important as we've, we've gone quite quick. But as we think about this, the, 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 the man that God actually chose to, to do this and, and to design this, he, he was an artist, if we call him that, like no, no other. There was a divine, there was something divine that was taking place in that man. And one of the things that got me even, uh, that really struck me was in all the translation, I'm sure, sure it's in the Hebrew too, it, it speaks as this particular man as in the singular context where it's him that's been called by God. There's, the scripture says that the spirit of God came upon him uh, and, and, and God anointed him to do that. But it was really strange that I came across in one of the translations, I think it was the NIV and one other translation that it actually says from verse 10, they, whereas every other translation keeps saying it's him. It's, mm. it's this one man. Mm -hmm. But it's amazing that there's in the NIV it actually says it got from verse 10. It says they did this. They did this. They did this. When when the whole context says it's just one man. But also, too, I think that this um, this whole thing, it was it was to prepare a place for God himself. And uh, he must have been some special anointed man to be able to see the things, even though. Um, uh, Moses was given in the instruction on what to do. This man was anointed that had something that he had open access to see what God really wanted. And, and to be honest, it represents the Lord uh, as the God man. <laughs> That's the whole thing about it. the Lord as the God man, uh, the fulfiller and the embodiment of, of, of the law. So that the gold spoke of his deity and the wood spoke of humanity. 
and mm. that's I think that's very that 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 it's very important as we go through seeing Jesus in in this seeing seeing the Christ in the whole thing. Mm. I uh, looked it up in Hebrew just to confirm what you said that it, all through the passage of uh, Bezalel making the ark, it's uh, first person. I mean, yeah. yeah, first person, third, sorry, third person singular, meaning he, yeah. it was he, 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 he yeah. made, he made, yeah. there's no they. I, I, I got so struck that we, that you could have a translation that goes on from, from verse 10 onwards saying they, 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 I mean, mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's just a totally. Quite, mm. Yeah, that's odd, really. Yeah. Well, he was he was the chief architect, so to speak. He, he was extraordinary. Mm. But getting back to what you said, Dennis, he he was given this spirit of wisdom, and that's mm. why he not only was he gifted, but God in, in, so inspired him and so enlightened him with revelation yeah. that he created this absolutely. Um, uh, unfortunately, that Clint, Clint, thank you so much. Unfortunately, that didn't do, do uh, the justice that I wanted to make it, uh, the impact that I wanted to have. It was just this extraordinary piece of holy furniture, you know, that that the presence of God was was radiating out of um, and leading the children of Israel through the long journey. But you're amazed, and I'm amazed too, about he made, he made, and he made in every yeah. every piece of furniture. Yeah. So he must have delegated it somehow a little bit to oh, what's his name, Pamela? Oh, oh, Oholiav. 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 Yeah. Pro probably in the um, not the furniture itself, not the key furniture, because mm -hmm. what we're looking at today in 37 are the key pieces. Of furniture in the Holy of Holies and the inner sanctuary. Exactly. Yeah. We're, we're looking at the Ark of the Covenant. Yeah. And then number two is, I think, what is number two? Table the, of showbread. Table of showbread. Then and comes the menorah, the lampstand. The menorah, the lampstand. And then and the, the altar, altar of incense. Or, the burnt offering first, and then the altar of. No, but the burnt, the, uh, no, that, um, what, what happened is, the reason I looked it up, the reason why they have the burnt offering is because they had to ordain the priesthood. They hadn't ordained the priesthood to serve in the tabernacle. And so they, they went, it, the passage brings the altar, the, the bronze altar in after the menorah in order for the priests to be ordained. And then at the end comes the altar of incense in chapter 30. And, and that, and, uh, go ahead. No, go ahead, finish, Pamela. No, I'm, I want to hear what you have to say. <laughs> oh, I want to hear what you have to say. <laughs> no, carry on, carry on, carry on. No, I'm listening. <laughs> no, I will get, get in. Sometimes we skip over. We skip over the, the you know the ark, and then we move on to the table of shoe bread, and we move on. But you know, as as Shemal just picked up again with this, the, the forming of the whole ark that meant so much. I mean, we know that people touched it and died by touching it. Um, it was so sacred, such a holy, uh, so 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 the divinity of God was on on on. on on that, on that piece, of, I don't call it apparatus, but you know what I mean. Um, furniture. Bit furniture, but you know, like I said before, the gold spoke about God's deity, and of course, the wood is humanity. But even the moldings, when I thought about I this, I really thought about that because the moldings that was done by Bezalel, <laughs> Bez yeah, Bezalel, yeah. you know, it, yeah, it, it, that the moldings even around it spoke of the kingly status. Speaking about Jesus, you know, just the, the four rings that were on there reflected the four gospels. And, and, and they say even that the, the two poles that went through represented, you know, the two testaments. There was, there was a lot in there that, I, that I, I thought, Lord, you know, you, you, that picture was there. 
It was, it was clear. And, you know, what was concealed in the Old Testament was real, revealed in the New Testament. And that, and that there was, there's so many minute details I found just around that ark. I must have been, had the wisdom of God, but so infused by the Spirit of God. Because there's so many details just in the ark. It's so powerful. If you just spend time looking at them, they all spoke of that which was to come. If you go back to the mercy seat, the mercy seat was all of gold. So it speaks all of God. And we think of the attribute, the divine attribute, mercy. So, oh, the, yes. so speaking yes. of, of God's divine attribute, <laughs> and we look that some time ago the different attributes of god a few weeks back and we looked at, yes. at mercy yeah and, and solid gold makes it costly but what's applied on it the blood was priceless hmm. so the gold is costly but the blood is priceless and that's and that's um we, we see the beauty and the distinctness of jesus christ himself his blood that was was shed for us, which is absolutely priceless for the redemption of our, our sins. Oh, yes, yes, yes. And also, the, we talk about um, the mercy seat, but it's not as a seat as we would think. Now, if you say seat, you're thinking about sitting down. But in actual fact, the work of the priest was not finished. They never sat down. They ministered uh, all the time from one day to the next day. And the only time when we um, read about a priest sitting down is after Jesus said, it is finished. And then he ascended to the right hand of the father and there he sat down. So before that, the priest always stood up, always ministering, never sat down. So when you think of mercy seat, don't think of like a chair, it's not, a chair it's a lid exactly exactly and, and and going back again to let's let's dig even further Betzalel made Betzalel himself made the ark of the covenant this yeah. is extraordinary um mm. he personally made the ark of the covenant whereas the other pieces of furniture were probably made um or at least it was understood that they were made by the other priests that 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 that, that uh, he was overseeing. According to this is of course for, this is a this is a traditional Jewish mm -hmm. understanding of the Ark of the Covenant that Betzalel himself alone made the Ark of the Covenant. I think that mm -hmm. makes him, him an amazing, uh, amazing, just yeah. amazing. Hmm. And, 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 and what you're saying, Rosemary, is so deep. The two cherubim, you know, mercy uh, and, um, and forgiveness, hmm. or mercy and, oh my goodness, what are those two cherubim representing? Hmm. Hmm. Good question. Yeah, yeah good question. Yes, it be met. Has oh mercy and truth. Yeah, mercy and truth. truth. Came Admit through together. Moses. Yeah, 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 yeah. But and grace and yeah. truth came through Jesus Christ. Right. Yeah. So now let's try to somehow relate this to Jesus Himself, mm -hmm. because if that's what it, we're, we're seeing, hidden meanings into the holy uh, furniture of the tabernacle here, mm -hmm. maybe everything Jesus spoke about Himself was referring to the fact that He tabernacled amongst us. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. and that's I was looking earlier uh, today in Hebrews nine, uh -huh. going back there, um, mm -hmm. eleven through fourteen, yeah, which really uh, refers to the mercy seat. The the are um, please the read it to us, Pamela. Okay, and then I also wanted to mention about the holiness of the ark and how the effect it, the holiness of the ark had on the Israelites in a couple of places. Let's so. Do it. Uh, I'll read 11 through 14. But Christ came as a high priest of good things to come with the greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands that is not of this creation, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, 
he entered the most holy place once and for all, having obtained eternal redemption. For if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of a heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifies for the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, uh, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. And for this reason, he is the mediator of the new covenant by means of death uh, for the redemption of the transgressions under the first covenant, that those who are called may receive the promise of the internal inheritance. Okay, so in 9, uh, 4. Chapter 9 and verse 4. Yeah, it, it, it starts to describe the tabernacle in verse two, for a tabernacle was prepared, the first part in which was the lampstand, the table, the showbread, which is called the sanctuary. And, the, and behind the second veil, the part of the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all, which had the golden altar of incense and the Ark of the Covenant overlaid on all sides with gold, in which were the golden pot that had the manna, Aaron's rod that budded, and the tablets of the covenant, and above it were the cherubim of glory overshadowing the mercy seat. Of mm. these things we cannot now speak in detail. So there's a description of the Ark of the Covenant, and then it explains about the mercy seat and the blood of Jesus uh, applied to the mercy seat, which then brings atonement, not just every year, yearly atonement, but eternal atonement. Oh, how wonderful. Oh, so powerful. Oh, so thank powerful. you. Thank you, Lord. You, you know, verse 9, Pamela, in saying all that, it is so powerful because it tells us clearly it was symbolic for the, the, the present time in which both gifts and sacrifice are offered, which cannot make him who performed the service perfect in regard to the conscience. And it brings me right back to that, this man, this man that was chosen, that, that we can hardly presume really that he would understand, he actually understood what he was making. <laughs> uh -huh. There's, there's no way he could have understood what he was making, but yet still God uses artistic intuition to be able to, to mold this thing, but he must have known that this was just more than wood and gold he was dealing with. Yes. You know, but, but we, we, we're now in this time, 2021, and we can look back, but he was working on something that he couldn't, there's no way. I, I, I believe that it, what, what he was making went far beyond any human comprehension. Right. <laughs> and now, now we look back and we see the power and we can look at the scriptures and we can look at references and we can look at commentaries. But this man had nothing but the blueprint that was given mm. to him. I, I mean, it's, 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 uh, it's incredible. <laughs> It's incredible. And God gave it to one man and made him the instructor to others, even if they would come and assist. But the download from the spirit was coming to him. I've never in my life ever given such emphasis or thought so much about this man until we oh, started to go oh, to the book oh, of Exodus. <laughs> and and let's, let's ponder the, the two cherubim. It says he made the cherubim at the two ends of one piece with the mercy seat. And the cherubim spread out their wings above and covered the mercy seat with their wings and they faced one another and the faces of the cherubim were toward the mercy seat. Oh and my Isaiah God. Isaiah saw the same vision. Holy, holy, holy yeah. is the Lord and, God Almighty. And the awesome thing is this, that those cherubim never ever saw the content they only they saw the lid. They only saw the blood. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> and we, angels, don't have the privilege of us, like us. We've been redeemed. They never, ever could see in. They could only see the lid and see the, the blood that would be on it. 
but that, that same blood was covering all the sins under, underneath. Oh, bless you, Lord. Mm. Mm. Us rebellious sinners, eh? And if you separate the if you separate the, the cherubim, you would break the mercy seat. Mm. Mm. They're all one piece. They're all one piece. Mm. That's so right. The, all one piece. Because they were the, solid gold. Yeah. Solid. Yep. And the cher the cherubim are symbols of um of power and guardianship. Oh. They looked over that mercy seat and they saw what was going on. They were like guarding that which was so precious. And and they say even to, unto this day that the technique that was used to make that the way it was, they still can't fully figure out. In some commentaries it says it was hammered gold, uh, but there was an amazing uh, divine technique that was used, they said, to make the uh, making of this cover. As we, we, we see it here, ham and gold. No mold was used. It wasn't molded. It was ham and. It'd be easy to mold it and make it all one thing. Melt the gold and make a mold, but it was hammered. It's, it's incredible. Mm. And, and facing each other too, mm. I guess speaks of agreement. As they looked over that mercy seat, facing each other that speaks of agreement here uh in ezekiel 28 um this is a an interesting prophecy um concerning the king of tyre but uh it it's uh, recognizable as uh, another figure uh, which is the enemy of god and uh, it begins in uh, Ezekiel 28 and verse 12. Son of man, take up a lamentation for the king of Tyre and say to him, thus says the Lord God, you were the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering. Sardius, topaz, diamond, beryl, onyx, jasper, sapphire, turquoise, an emerald with gold, the workmanship of your timbrels and pipes was prepared for you on the day you were created. Now here it is, verse 14. You were the anointed cherub who covers. Mm. I establish you, you were on the holy mountain of God. Uh, you walked back and forth in the midst of the fiery stones. You were perfect in your ways. Mm. So this is a, um, a description of the cherub and its function, it covers. Wow. Oh, covering cherub, that's down in verse 16. So this was a, a cherub that rebelled against God. Okay, so we're, we're still fascinated with that's so low. And I want to turn back to chapter 35 that I just found in verses 30 through 35. Rosemary, can you read that for us, please? 35 or 37? 30 to 35. Okay. Chapter 35, 30 through 35. Okay. And Moses said to the children of Israel, See, the Lord has called by name. Betzael, the son of Uri, the son of her of the tribe of Judah, and he has filled him yeah. with the spirit of God in wisdom and understanding, in knowledge and all manner of workmanship, to design artistic works, to work in gold and silver and bronze, in cutting jewels for setting, hmm. in carving wood, and to work in all manner of artistic workmanship. And he has put in his heart the ability to teach, to teach mm. in him and Aholiab, the son of Ahishamak of the tribe of Dan. He was filled, he has filled them with skill to do all manner of work mm. of the engraver and the designer and the tapestry maker in blue, purple and scarlet thread and fine linen and of the weaver 
those who do every work and those who design artistic works. This is a phenomenal person. Phenomenal, really. just phenomenal. Because usually in each of these things, a, one person would be a specialist in, but God gave him the ability in all. So he was anointed phenomenally by God. Hmm. And not only that, if you read what it says here, he was the son of Hur of the tribe of Judah. And um, I think he was somehow related to uh, Kalev, if I'm not mistaken. You know, ah. one of the, the yeah. two, two the, uh, Joshua and Kalev were the two spies that did not um, mm. um, yeah. uh, agree with the, ten, the, 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 the sin of the ten spies. Mm. <laughs> yeah. They said, we, surely we can take this mountain. Yeah. Give me this mountain, I think he mm. said. Wow. So he had that same spirit of faith then. Yeah, so he was... He, exactly what God said. Exactly, exactly. He was an extraordinary man. Mm called by God, anointed by God, and that's why he created this extraordinary mm -hmm. uh, furniture for the Lord's tabernacle. All right, let's, have we, have we finished uh, more or less, or we'll never finish speaking about this? That's just awesome. Shall we move on? Or does anybody have anything further to say about this part of the holy furniture that's built for the tabernacle? Well, the, uh, the Ark of the Covenant is so bottom line in uh, the whole history of salvation. Yes. You know, we, we could not understand um, Jesus, what he did on the cross without the Ark of the Covenant. Is that... Is that a clear yeah. statement or not? Most definitely. Yeah. It's, it's, it, the, the ark was a symbol of the incarnation. Yeah. We, we wouldn't be able to uh, comprehend whatsoever. Hmm. It's almost like when you get to Calvary, you get the deity on the cross, the wood. He was hung up covering that cross, the wood. Wood speaks of humanity. And then we saw the God man on the cross it is you could just spend hours alone just looking at the art i mean mm -hmm. you couldn't really go into this looking at the art and not want to bow down <laughs> yeah. it was so uh, and it's not it, it's not something that could just be treated lightly david was a man after god's own heart but, but he didn't seek the lord about how to bring it back because it carried his presence and it, and it it caused death Oh, because th this has to do with the rings and the poles, by the way. Mm -hmm. First Samuel yes. 6. The, they that. put it on, they put on, they put a the book, ark a, on a cart. Yeah. And it was, it was carried by the oxen. Yeah. And Uzzah, you know, the, it hit a rock or something. And Uzzah reached out and touched study. the ark to study. And he was uh, struck dead. Yeah. And it wasn't, and so then it sat in the house of um, Obed Obed Edom. Edom. Yes. Mm. And it sat there for 20 years. And then the next time when David came to pick it up and bring it to Jerusalem, mm. he brought the Kohathites because those were the priests that were supposed to carry supposed the to ark. And they're supposed to carry it with the poles going through the rings. <laughs> Amazing. amazing, really amazing. amazing. Yeah, the poles going through the rings. Very interesting. <laughs> and I thought about, I thought about that because the poles were symbolizing the Old and New Testament, as some commentators have said, and and the rings, the four Gospels, and you got Jesus coming saying, "I'm not come to destroy the law, but to fulfill it." Uh, it's it's there's so much in there that's so awesome. Yeah, yeah. They carried it. So what we're reading now was carried on the four Gospels, in the four Gospels. Mm -hmm. yeah. hmm.
I see we've only gotten to the arc today. Well, look, it's almost, it's almost, we haven't been back. able to do the whole chapter. So let's go back to chapter 25, Pamela, since we okay. can, we're going to look like we're running out of time today. We are back to chapter 25 and read verses 16 through 21. Okay. Um, you shall put into the ark of the testimony which I will give you. You shall make a mercy seat of pure gold. Two and a half cubits shall be its length and a cubit and a half its width. And you shall make two cherubim, cherubim of hammered work. And you shall make them at the two ends of the mercy seat. Make one cherub at one end and the other cherub at the other end. You shall make the cherubim at the two ends of it of one piece with the mercy seat. And the cherubim shall stretch out their wings above the covering of the mercy seat with their wings, and they shall face one another. The faces of the cherubim shall be toward the mercy seat. You shall put the mercy seat on top of the ark, and in the ark you shall put the testimony that I will give you. And there I will meet with you, and I will speak with you from above the mercy seat, from between the two cherubim, which are on the ark of the testimony of all things, which I will give you in commandment to the children of Israel. That's a very key verse, verse 22. Yes, Let's read that is. again. Rosemary, read that again to us, verse 22. Oh, 25. Two. Yeah, two. Chapter 25, verse and, 22. And there I will meet with you, and I will speak with you from above the mercy seat, from between the two cherubim, which are on the Ark of the Testimony, about everything which I will give you in commandment to the children of Israel. Very appropriate verse to close this round table. I'm gonna look it up in X, I'm gonna look it up in the Amplified. Give me just a moment. Did I say that that was chapter 25 and verse 22? 22. Yeah. Okay. There I will meet with you. And from above the mercy seat, from between the two cherubim that were upon the ark of the testimony, I will speak intimately with you of all which I will give you in the commandment to the Israelites. Just an extraordinary thing. Thank you, Dennis, for making us mindful of how important this first piece of furniture was. Uh, the, uh, it just pales uh, all the other pieces of furniture. It's quite interesting <laughs> that, it's, that, that, in, that in this account in Exodus, we're moving from the holiest piece of furniture mm. to the least holiest piece of furniture, so to speak. Of course, mm. <laughs> we're doing it like almost, um, what's the word, in descending order. Yeah, walking out backwards. <laughs> yes, exactly. exactly. <laughs> well, this was a rather unique uh, Bible study. We, we were not able to go any further than the Ark of the Covenant, that may give us all something to think about this week yeah. as we're ending, uh, coming to the end of this extraordinary um, journey that we're on together. It's it's a great way to uh, be entering into the Feast of Trumpets. Oh, is yes. it? Yes. 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 Exactly. Mm. Exactly. Rosh Hashanah mm -hmm. is next uh, Monday night. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. 5782, according to the Hebrew calendar. Yep. Mm -hmm. My well. Lord. Mm. Mm. Pamela, why don't you begin closing and yeah. then we'll, we'll, we'll join you. Pamela, oh. say a prayer for us. Okay. As a closing prayer, and then Rosemary, you continue, and Dennis and myself will join you. Mm. Father in heaven, we praise you and we bless you. We give you all the honor and the glory to your son, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, for this roundtable, 
for bringing the four of us together and all the brothers and sisters with us, Lord. We want to give you all the honor for what uh, we have learned today through the Ark of the Covenant. Lord, it is such a profound truth that it's going to take quite a bit of time for us to ponder this mm -hmm. as we cool. enter into the high holy days and the feast of trumpets mm -hmm. uh, lord we thank you for bringing this to our attention and That's we cool. pray open our hearts lord that mm -hmm. we may learn that we may sit at your feet yes, and that cool. we may understand the revelation that you are giving to us lord and we ask this in the name of yeshua thank you Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we just thank you so much that you came to be with us. We want to thank you that you're the God of detail, the most intricate detail. And we want to thank for Bethsaiel, Lord, and for the ability that you gave him and those other workmen to, to do your bidding. They had to do everything according to the plan and the pattern. And Lord, we, as we even think of the wood, the wood, shitting wood, it was ordinary wood, but the, the, even the ordinariness of that wood had to be overlaid with gold, costly gold. We think of the mercy seat, pure gold, costly, the the, the 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 molding the the making of the the mercy seat and the the cherubim all one piece no separation speaking of agreement yes. and lord we, we want to thank you it was although the goal was so costly it was the blood that was priceless mm -hmm. and that blood was a foreshadow of the blood that was sprinkled on that mercy it was was a foreshadow of that blood of your precious son jesus christ that was going to be shed for the remission of our sins that precious 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 blood of jesus mm -hmm. that would cleanse us completely of our sins as we accepted that work was done at calvary we think we can look back mm -hmm. And now begin to understand what you had already planned before the foundation of this earth. Thank you, Lord, because you had us in mind. You knew as you looked down through the generations, we would need a savior. We would need that blood to cleanse us and make us pure. Thank you for our high priests. Thank you for the great priests Thank you for that great work that has been done in Jesus Christ. And Lord, as we look back, we see it's now a finished work. Uh, as, you, as he sits down at your right hand, the work is finished. It is finished. It is finished. Oh, that we may accept it and receive it and have that complete work done in our hearts and that transformation take place that we become one with you through the precious blood of Jesus. Amen and amen. amen. And Lord, I just want to thank and praise you, Lord Jesus, for the privilege of being to sit here with my Lord, two sisters and my brother, Lord, and be in a place where we don't have to rush and move on. But Lord God, we thank for your Holy Spirit that would really have us sit together today, Father, and to ponder the depths, Lord, I know that, that the ark had to come about somehow, Lord, and and and, and so the, the, the size, the materials, Lord, the details were all given, Father, uh, in a pictorial, Father God, a representation of, of Christ to come, and we want to thank and praise you, Lord, even as, as mm. Christ had to come, uh, so, he had to come about somehow too, as well, Lord, we thank you, because the Bible shows us that it didn't just, it didn't just pop into existence, oh Lord, in order to save us, but rather, Lord God, your son came from you, perfect and pure in all his ways, Father. Your infinite nature came forth to unite us, Father, to the finite. We thank and praise you right now. We thank you right now for even where we are, Lord. We can't understand it all. But we want to thank you for the giftings and the callings, the anointings that you've put on the body of Christ, each member, to fulfill your role. 
Lord, we pray even through this, that Lord God, whatever you called us to do, that we would just be obedient and do it and you will do the rest. Yeah. And Lord, I cannot get the picture out of my mind today, which has never been there before, with these cherubims looking down, as it were, at this, as it were, mercy seat, the covering, Lord, and oh. seeing the blood, oh, seeing the blood, not being able to see what's inside, mm. but just seeing the blood. I thank you, Lord. I thank you mm. so much. The angels can't comprehend what we've experienced through redemption of the blood. But I thank you right mm. now mm. as they look on, Lord. They look on mankind. And they understand that there's something that you've done through your son that has caused us to be redeemed from the curse. I thank you, Abba. Yeah, I thank, thank you, Abba. You. I thank you, Abba. Thank you. When you see the blood, you pass over. Thank you. And as we go into these days of all, Lord, these days that are sent us apart, apart in repentance, Father God, that we come to that place of Yom Kippur, the atonement, Lord. We pray and thank you for this platform. Thank you for this platform. Lord, this was not our plan, but man makes his plan. The outcome depends on you. Thank you. For this glorious outcome thank you for poor uh for shamal and for pamela thank you thank you thank you thank you hallelujah Amen. Well, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Amen. <laughs> and Amen. we were, we waited upon the Lord today. And I tell you what, I I I sense and feel revitalized. Amen. Mm. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's been mm. it's just there's so much things here to ponder. For those of you that joined us just today, just want to unmute and say uh, hello. Uh, we thank God for um, Jermaine who was overseeing the the, the, the last couple of round tables we had while Clint was away and it's great to have Clint back and yes. uh where it's, it's it's just good to be in the family of God amen hallelujah come mute right now and greet each other in Jesus name amen God Thank bless you. everybody. Thank God you very much. Bless you. 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 Bless you.